And it used to surprise me to find out across Africa how many Yoruba women own shops and sell in the local market across West Africa and into East Africa. Yoruba. Not to talk of the corporate world. We were looking for a director for a London listed firm where I sit down on as a board. And we had said that there were already two, two Nigerians on that board. We don't want any other Nigerian. We want it to be Pan-African. Look across Africa, search, and find anybody but a Nigerian. They searched and searched and searched and searched and searched. And we added another caveat that it had to be a woman. And they searched. And every name that came back was either a Nigerian or a South African. The two that we said we didn't want. At the end of the day, we had to settle for a Nigerian again. What is my name? What is your name? Many names have been associated to us over the years, many. And I cringe when I hear the names that I am called, oftentimes by my own people, from my own mouths. You cannot watch a program that features Nigeria. Impossible, you can't. Go on Google, YouTube, whatever. Click Nigeria and look for any live program, news program that is talking about current affairs or the affairs of Nigeria. And I bet you my last dollar that you will hear the word corruption, it must come out. It's a name that we are called. Any report on Nigeria today in current terms must have somewhere in there Boko Haram. On any given day, have a discussion, just one-on-one -on -one discussion in Nigeria. And somehow, 419 will come out, fraud will come out, liar, thief, criminal, lazy, untrustworthy, scammer, wicked, militant. And when describing governments, you will hear regime. You know what a regime is? That's not a democratic word. But that's what we always say. Ah, the regime of this, the regime of that. That's what you hear all the time. You hear greed, inefficiency, inept, weak, failed states. All these are names that they are trying to give to us. Engineered permanently to keep you in a circle of failure. You know, I'm not here advocating that some of these things don't exist. It depends on how and who the narrative is coming from. A week ago, I attended a program. Organo Gold was doing their launch in Nigeria. The Americans who had come in for the first time and relating very much with our next speaker as well at what she said about Nigeria had different words once they've come in here. Different words. I don't hear these words on CNN, but this is what I heard. She went on the stage and was addressing Nigerians and started, oh, you're a beautiful people, hospitable, kind, welcoming, entrepreneurial, accommodating, friendly, elegantly dressed, and so on and so forth. Another European lady that came for the first time said as soon as she landed in Nigeria, the first thing that she got once she came out in Lagos was this air of vibrancy, this air that anything is possible, this entrepreneurial spirit. I never hear that on the news. What we are called affects us when we go out into the business world. Be very careful about it. Anyone you meet for the first time, once you introduce yourself as a businessman, businesswoman coming from Nigeria, what they remember are the names that you are called long before they listen to what your business is about. So how do we reinvent ourselves? In this extremely economic competitive world. We are told that only the sharp will survive. Only those who will look after themselves first and damn everybody will survive. It's not true. That mentality will kill. Time and time again, 
through one program or the other, we always hear about people trying to tie and tear you down. We need to change that. I hardly ever find people who are willing to look for the good and lift up and motivate that good. Yes, the story and the news might not be exciting when you're not talking about the negative things, the next big scandal. Everybody is waiting. As soon as Buhari comes, they will start listing the names of those who have stolen. I know that's what everyone is waiting for. And nobody is saying that those things should not happen. No. But do we really want to uplift ourselves? We must realize that you cannot divorce yourself from Nigeria. It's not possible. You and Nigeria are one. Whatever story they say about Nigeria, they're saying about you. It doesn't matter who they're talking about. You are the ones. I am the one that they're speaking about. So, I want to hear stories. I was sitting down at a dinner next to somebody I'd never met who came in from some foreign country and walked into Diola Sego's shop and came out. Did not know that I knew her and he was talking about the experience that he had going into this professional, talented, God-given, all he could just do was sing praises about her. I want to hear and told of stories like Bolanle or St. Peter and what she has done with Saru and the cultural revolution that it is causing and the stories that it's telling and the professionalism of it. I met a young lady on my way to Dubai once. And when she introduced herself, she said that she sells Ogi. I said, Ogi, if you look at this girl, she can work in any corporate organization. But her business is selling Ogi. And she has taken selling Ogi to an art that is above anything else that you would know. That is the Nigerian I know. That entrepreneurial ability to take what is common and what is local and make it grand. I wish we would tell more stories of our successes. The successes of the many and leave these failures of the few alone. So what role must I play? What role must you play? Every one of us has a role to play. We have to act and we must act now. You see, we all have a zone of influence, some local, some international, some global. I've been blessed to travel the global scene, and my role is to make sure that as many people as can hear about the side of Nigeria they never see, I will tell it. That's my zone of influence. As a company, as a, as a corporate organization, we push that out. And we voluntarily, voluntarily, put ourselves under investigation, called one of the world-class investigators and said, investigators, anything that you think that we're doing that is outside of the law, please tell us, investigate. Put ourselves under scrutiny. Why? Because we're always under scrutiny. So we said, do it. We signed up for something called PACHI, Partnering Against Co uh, Corporation Initiatives. Pachi, under the World Economic Forum, only one other Nigerian company is on it. I said, you guys are always talking about change and corruption and initiatives around corruption, and you don't think that you need to involve us as to how we're going to work on it. It's a major thing to do. The United Nations asked us to come and work with them on the Sustainable Development Goals and how we can advance and elevate poverty. These are platforms that very few Nigerians have found as corporate or government institutions. But we need to be there. We need to influence within the sphere that God has given us. You have to influence in your neighborhood. Change must start from you. The bottom line is that I've made my choice. What's yours? Positive, negative. Gandhi said, you must be the change that you wish to see in the world. You have your sphere of influence. In concluding, 
I can tell you this thing. 